out here in the hot weather, but we could have it in nice air conditioned comfort. <laughs> Sometimes we need to be reminded that uh, other people, man, to diverge for one second. We watched a movie called The Finger of God the other day, and it, it was mind blowing. There was a scene in uh, China where the underground church was worshiping together, and they had called this guy to go um, speak. And in America, we say, "How long do we speak? You got 30 minutes? You got an hour?" And he goes, "Oh, you can preach from eight in the morning till till seven at night. And then will you come back the next day? Will you come back the next day?" He came to realize that they didn't even have a Bible in that town. He was the only Bible that they were going to see as he was speaking the Word of God. The room temperature was packed like sardines more than this is, and it was 120 degrees, and people stayed there from 8 in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. Church, we have too much creature comforts at times for our own good. You know, so sometimes it's important to remind ourselves that, man, we, we have it great, and let's do what God's called us to do to continue to reach people debt we want to try to avoid it as a church we are currently 100 percent debt free um, at some point we anticipate that unless god moves in the supernatural we may have a mortgage but just like we challenged and talked about last week um, you know we don't want to have debt on consumable items like cameras and tvs and chairs we don't want to have debt for those things but like many people we may be faced with a, a day where we have a mortgage on a building we want to responsibly have one that we can more than afford that's not eating up too much of our budget so that we're living for the building instead of living to go out and and share the good news and draw people into a relationship with god so uh, we live it out the same way we'd encourage a young family to do we try to put nothing on a credit card that we can't pay off by the end of the month the only reason we put them on credit cards just so you can get what? Points. Points, right? You have to be able to pay it all at the end of the month. Otherwise, do not use a credit card. So I just want to close for a second by sharing on uh, loving God and, and the, the, the details of church membership. Um, if our mission is to lead people into becoming fully devoted followers of Christ, it, needs to, it means that we have to speak the truth. It means that we need to challenge people to live the way that the Bible calls us to live, to walk and become mature in their relationship with Christ. Membership is just a word, but here we see membership as what I started to share a little earlier. One, you have to be a member of God's very own family. You have to be a believer in Jesus Christ. If you have not yet crossed that line to turn your life over to him, talk to me. Talk to us. See what that means. Let's explore that together. And you, you might come to the same conclusion that we have, that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he died for your sins. And you know, that's the starting point. To be a member, you've got to be a family member. You've got to be a member of God's very own family. Turn your life over to him. Um, we need to exhibit a lifestyle where we're growing towards being a fully devoted follower. Um, that's kind of hard to define when you look at somebody's life, but they're probably some outward indicators of an inward heart condition. They're not perfect in nature, but there's some things that you can see that help you uh, determine if a person is striving towards becoming a fully devoted follower. Deuteronomy 10:12 says, And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him, and to serve the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. It sounds a lot like love the Lord your God, or you're loving God, loving others, and serving the world, doesn't it? <laughs> so a fully devoted follower is very hard to define, but here are some <coughs> outward indicators. If a person is regularly attending services, if they're regularly giving of their finances, if they're regularly serving, if they're regularly showing up in small groups, if they're on occasion when we're doing things like the outreaches, which we try to do once a month, if they're coming to some of them, not all of them, but if they're coming to some of them, you know, maybe it's not their total heart's passion to do those like mine, where I try to be at all of them because I love that. You know, others, you know, if you're a member of the family, you might need to show up to one or two of those in a year to show support, to support others who are out there. You want to be a around your church family. When people are getting baptized, you want to show up so that you can witness that life moment with them. This is your extended family. Those are some of the uh, signs. There are no guarantee, uh, but these folks who are doing these kinds of things are expressing with the words of the mouth, the desires of their heart, with their actions, that they're seeking to become more fully devoted followers of him. <coughs> So in week four, if you decide you want to become a member, those are the kinds of things you're going to be encouraged to do. We're going to encourage you to attend regularly. We're going to encourage you to give. We're going to encourage you to serve. We're going to encourage you to be a part of a small group. We're not going to raise the bar so high as to be impossible, but we're going to challenge you to step it up just a little bit to a level where it's not just maintenance. 
if we're just showing up in church on Sunday and that's all the Christianity you get, you're going down, I'm telling you. You're going in the wrong direction. If you start to have a daily devotion time with God and you're spending time in His presence, Sunday becomes an overflow of what's going on in your life. And, and those things, you know, is what makes real life happen. So we need to be at a place where we're growing as believers. And one thing I would challenge you, if you really feel that God's calling you to be a member, show up for that first Wednesday praise and worship and prayer service because... You know, I never want to be a church where what was birthed and started in God starts to be carried on in the power of man. Right. We'll never get to that place. Right. If we believe that prayer changes things, that the heart of the Father is reached through prayer, prayer needs to be a priority in our life. Right now it's a first Wednesday thing. We want to see that expanded and it's going to continue to grow. We wanted to protect our members and our volunteers by not growing it too fast where we're burning out everybody who's in the kids' church, burning out everybody who's on the worship team. We need to strategically grow that. But if we're to see the church grow, to see the church further, there's powers and principalities and heavenly places that are set against Journey, that are set against Clay County, that are set against Northeast Florida. The only way those things are going to come down, that true evangelism can happen, that true true life change can happen in our friends, our family members, those who are around here is if we get on our knees and say, God, will you help us yes. in Jesus' name? So make that one service, one Wednesday a month, make it a priority. Be here this coming Wednesday. I'm telling you, I believe it's going to be the most strategic, most important first Wednesday service that we've had in the life of the church. I challenge you to just be there with us to pray and seek God. He's He's moving and he's going to do something really special that night. I just sense it in my heart. Um, we are people who love God, but we are not a perfect people, are we? We all have uh, faults. We all have blemishes. We all have challenges in our life. We're all hypocrites to some degree or another. We are all forgiven, but we don't use that as an excuse to not grow. We need to continue to grow even though God does forgive us. We need to be all that we can be in Him. And that's really what membership's about. It's about getting to know Him personally, knowing what His passions are, and then knowing what He loves and knowing what He hates, and then putting those same kinds of things into practice in our very own lives. Knowing what God wants for us as individuals and learning to simply put those into practice. Um, there's that one song by Carrie Underwood, Jesus, Take the Wheel. You know, it really defines pretty much what we're talking about, that we need to turn the wheel of our lives over to the God of the universe who created us. And then by becoming a member, we're really saying we're allowing these other people who God's put in our life to hold us accountable to our growth, to our spiritual development. And that's really what it's all about. It's not uh, just something that we're writing on a piece of paper. It's not some exclusive group. Really, if you choose to do this, you're choosing to say, hey, I, I want to be under authority. I want to be at a place where people are going to challenge me to grow in my life. If that's not what you want, then membership's not for you. I mean, this is what it's about. It's about growing, serving, loving, reaching, touching the world with the love of Christ. So that's what it's all about for us at the core of what membership is all about. And I know this is just a brief overview. I promise you there's going to be plenty of chances for questions and answers and things of that nature in the weeks ahead. Um, but at the core of it, I want every one of us who's here at Journey to get to heaven and be at the doors and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, Brian and I don't seek to be pastors who lord it over anybody. We're the kind of pastors who want to be in the trenches with everybody. We never ask people to do things that we wouldn't do. It's just our heart. We get to and are honored to get to do life with you guys. We're excited about all that God's doing. We believe in the mission, the vision, the values that God's birthed here as a church. And uh, we, we're just privileged to have an opportunity to minister in this area. And we're privileged that some of you feel led that you might want to come along for this journey that we can do life alongside of one another. We don't take it even for a minute for granted. We love what we get to do, and, and uh, we couldn't do it without you. There's no way we couldn't make church happen without you. It takes all of us who call this church family a home to really make it happen. Without you guys, it's just not going to happen. And It's just not going to happen. So if you're feeling called, if you're feeling led, I challenge you to come back to the rest of the classes. Maybe you're not feeling it yet, but you'd like to explore just a little bit more about what the heartbeat is of Journey Church. Come for these next couple of weeks. And then on week four, if you're sensing that it's not for you, you want to just kind of be an attender, nobody 
nobody's taking notes right now of who's in the class, nobody's saying it, you just slip back out there and it's good. You can be an attender, you can be comfortable until the right time. When people um, want to attend, we want to give them a certain level of anonymity for a season, right? We want to be able to welcome them, they can feel comfortable that they could walk in here, but when God starts to tug at their heartstrings, then you know we're family. We got to start going up and, and taking things to the next level in our lives. Is all this stuff making general sense to you? Yes. Any big questions off the top of your head that might relate to the overview? I know there's some deeper ones that some of you might have, but how about any questions on the overview stuff that we've talked about today? What time Wednesday night? Um, Wednesday night is at 7 p.m. Uh, we'd love for you to be here live and in person, but if you can, it's also broadcast online, so you, you can join us for the service online if you if you feel it. Any big questions from the stuff that I, I got? Anything caught anybody off guard from what I shared? Any cries of outrage here? <laughs> We're family. You're welcome to have them. John, you're looking like you got a question. Are you good? April, somebody else had a question? No. no, no, no. All right. So next week, what you could expect is it's going to be really surrounding um, small groups. We're going to talk about the purpose of groups, the, the ways that they help people grow. And just so you know, we, we really challenge people, if you're a member, you're required to attend one season of groups. You're recommended that you attend two. We challenge many of you to lead a group if you feel so led. But when you think about that in the context of the big picture, our average group semester is between 10 and 12 weeks. So really, if you do the requirement, we're encouraging you to spend 12 of your 52 weeks going and growing in a small group that's probably a maintenance level if you go to two seasons you're about 24 weeks you might be close to half of your year in groups that's a little bit of a higher demand right so it's not required it's recommended if you want to grow you spend that extra time in Christ so we're going to talk about the purpose of groups the meaning behind them if you ever feel led to facilitate one you'll get some tips on that next week the third week is all about serving the importance of serving in the house of God the motivation for serving where it's really birthed out of relationships Relationship and an expression of what's going on in our heart that we get we get to serve in the house of God. It's not a it's not a have to, it's a get to. We get to serve the living God. He's called us, He's put gifts in your hearts and skills in your minds that you can live out, and He wants you to use them in the context of church for the furtherance of his kingdom. So that's week three. Week four is a little bit of a review, and it's an opportunity that if you feel called to, to sign on to the church, you can do so. There's a, a final Q&A session that time where if there's any questions that have not been answered up to that point, feel free to, to ask them. If there's anything that you need answered and you're not comfortable sharing it in a group, you can email me, ejaffe at journeychurch.org. You can hit me up on Facebook. Um, you can call the office. Get me those questions. I'll be glad to talk to you during the course of the week and, and uh, answer any questions that you might have that we did not cover within the course of the class. Make sense to everybody? Yes. Let's pray one more time. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for this wonderful group of people who are your servants, who love you, Lord God, and that we're all trying to grow uh, to be fully devoted followers of you. In the areas that we're not putting you first, Lord, would you empower us to put you first, that we would grow in our walk with you and and our love for you, Lord God, that our relationship would just grow and that we would be you know, simply fired up to serve you with everything that's within our hearts, uh, that we would be about your purposes and your mission and your vision in our life, that you would show us what it is that you would have us do and that if it be your will to knit us together as a church family and, and in terms of membership, Lord, that you would just make that happen, Lord God, that we would just be accountable to one another, that we'd be there for one another, that we'd love one another and help each other grow to be fully devoted followers of you. We honor you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in this place. We pray for the incoming service that uh, folks would be here that don't know you, that would come to know you, that those who do know you would be more excited to be called your children, and Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to, to have a church right here in Clay County. Lord, use us to change our worlds in Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Give God